Do you ever just scroll through Mal, checking seasonals for something that piques your interest? Chances are you probably have. Ever take a look into the staffing for your favorite shows? Chances are you probably have. Personally, I used to claim that I was a diehard Kana Hanazawa fan, but I don't really know much about her career, especially the choices she made to get where she is now. Kana Hanazawa is a well-known seiyuu for sure. A lot of us know her for voicing cutesy or teen characters, but nowadays some of her most notable roles are adult characters. I get it, I get it, it's a natural evolution of the craft. Veterans like her are able to master youth adulthood and seniority. But still, it made me wonder how she got to this point. Kana Hanazawa has been an absolutely dominant force in Japan, through her outstanding catalog of roles, voice acting, anime, music, and even affecting the relative pop culture of Japan, Kanazawa is a monstrous entity of labor. <laughs> Hanazawa began her career as a child actor in the Fuji TV program Yapari Sanma Dai Sensei. At the age of 8 years old, cheerful and carefree smiles filled her face and those around her, contrary to the world around them. At the time, the 90s in Japan were tumultuous and economically ruined. This time, referred to as the lost decade, was caused by the asset price bubble collapsing in 1991, leaving Japan well behind their fellow industrialized nations. To remedy their lack of economic prowess and real wages sitting around the 5% mark, entertainment was at a new crossroads as white-collar workers flooded every crevice they could find to provide for themselves or their families. Hanazawa, in this age of simplistic entertainment, ran alongside the likes of other variety shows like Mecha Mecha Ikteru and other influential anime like Sazesan, who shaped the culture around Fuji TV being a staple of Japanese entertainment. Her role in all of this mishmash of culture and rapidly advancing technology was to simply be charismatic and energetic in her position. To that extent, she completely excelled at her ability to speak and entertain. From the beginning, Hanazawa was eager to enter conversations of all capacity even those that forced her to step outside of her comfort zone, especially as a female child in the 90s. Notably, she worked among future colleagues during this period, whether she knew it or not, one being popular voice actor Aoi Yuki, who worked alongside her to act in the show as well. After her time on Yapati Sanma Dai Sensei, she had established herself as a member of the entertainment industry, but not yet in any major ways. At the age of 14, she is still pretty young and unrecognized to be cast for a main role. That is, unless you're Hayao Miyazaki, where the director requires authenticity to its voices. But most directors would cast a young girl with about the same level of experience as Hanazawa as a side character. For Studio Gonzo, who at this point had produced series like Helsing and Full Metal Panic, they cast Hanazawa for the role of Holly Madthane, a small supporting character with negligible dialogue. Now, determining whether she was actually competent at voice acting at this point is quite hard to gauge, seeing as all her lines in the entire series are only in a few episodes and not to mention all of her lines are short and quiet. Now I'm no voice actor, so trusting my judgment in terms of skills should be taken with a grain of salt, but what I do think I am competent in judging is recognizing the pattern of characters Hanazawa plays and how to adapt to fit those characters distinctively. Seeing her ability to control the flow of conversation in Yapati Sanma Dai Sensei is not even closely utilized in Last Exile. Her character is meant to be a small child whose upper class disallows her from speaking out of term or being loud in most situations, which works quite contrary to what occurred to her work in 1995-1997. to 1997. 
Unfortunately, due to the small role she received, there are no interviews or statements that are available from what I found to ponder her thought process nor her thoughts about entering the field of anime as a professional voice actor. I don't think that's such a big deal though considering how she's only 14 and a career path is up in the air for her circumstance. Hanazawa scores big with her next role though, playing Ryoko Kamanagi, a main character in Zega Pain, but she isn't just scoring big because she got a main role. Let's talk about the evolving landscape of anime for a second. We are at day two of Anime Expo 06. As you can see, there is a shitload of people all around me, and I swear I haven't seen this many virgins since high school. But um, tsh. so yeah, um, we should be here all day today. We should cover more than we did yesterday, so it should be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. From 2006 to 2007, anime was on an absolute tear. Digital animation is finally getting to a point of normalcy and lifting itself past the weird and frequently awkward styles of many early 2000s series. Take a look at this catalog of shows in 2006 and 2007. Bam, 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 bam. Nonstop bangers. And many of these shows shaped the cultural phenomenon behind what anime would come to be recognized by Western audiences. In fact, most millennials, from what I gathered, got into anime around 2006 through fan subculture, making shows like Haruhi available and relevant to their understanding of the medium. When I say this era went nuts in terms of digital animation and availability of anime in the West, I mean absolutely crazy. You won't rewrite our scenario. Sorry, dude, but I got a thing about being told what to do. Don't cause a commotion. In 2005, YouTube was created. People flooded the site with content, including pirated anime with fan subs. And for most people, watching terrible quality anime through YouTube or the evolving streaming services was the best bet. So for Kana Hanazawa to score a role as the main character in 2006 is nothing short of a perfect coincidence to jumpstart her career as a voice actor tenfold. We got a whole new audience getting into anime, and a brand new voice actor about to quite literally grow up among these people watching her work through the years. Mind you, she's only 17 at the time, so her eventual career has tons of time to evolve and flourish through this newfound age of entertainment.
We gotta let it burn, 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 burn. We gotta let it burn, 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 burn. We gotta let it burn, 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 burn. We gotta let it burn, 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 burn.